Murder is the leading cause of death for rappers, and it seems like we hear about the deaths of some of our favorite musicians a couple times a year. Unfortunately, we do lose a lot of artists to violence on the streets. Today, we'll look at the men who killed rappers and whether justice has been served. Chink's Drugs New York native Lionel Dufon Pickens was born in 1983 and grew up in Queens. Like a lot of kids in the hood, he dropped out of high school in ninth grade. He decided that music was where he would make his fortune, so he stayed home writing raps and figuring out beats. Of course, Pickens needed to pay for studio time if he ever wanted to make it in the industry, and there aren't many job openings for 15-year-old high school dropouts. His only option was to start slinging drugs to get cash to pay for recording sessions. Just as his music was taken off with the Riot Squad rap group, he was sentenced to almost five years in prison on robbery and drug charges in 2005. His music was put on hold, but due to some gang connections he made behind bars, he was able to hook up with more established people in the industry, like French Montana. The pair would form the group Coke Boys together before Drugs went out on his own to release some solo mixtapes. The Coke Boys also kept working and releasing music over the next couple of years. By the end of 2014, he was already hinting about the upcoming release of his debut studio album called Welcome to JFK. Unfortunately, he didn't get to see the album released though, because on May 17, 2015, he was tragically killed. Let's go to the beginning. Chinks had just finished performing at a show in Brooklyn and was driving back to his home in Queens in his silver Porsche. A friend was sitting next to him in the passenger seat. Instead of going straight home, they decided to head to a favorite hookah bar. When they got there, they saw that they were too late and it was already closed. As they headed home on Queens Boulevard around 4 in the morning, they pulled up to a red light. A car pulled up next to the Porsche on the driver's side. Suddenly, shots were fired and bullets smashed through the driver's window. After the shots were fired, Chinks was able to pull the car away from the light and toward the curb in front of a Dunkin' Donuts. The other vehicle drove off. The two men were rushed to the Jamaica Hospital Medical Center, where it was discovered that Chinks had been hit at least eight times. He died at the hospital. His friend was shot twice and suffered a punctured lung but survived. The rapper's death was a shock to his friends in the industry. Meek Mill tweeted, The hood gotta stop glorifying suckers that kill good people. And DJ Khaled posted, God bless you, your family, your team. Chinks is a good man. Good heart, good friend. God bless you, my brother. People in the neighborhood of Far Rockaway, where Chinks grew up, weren't as surprised. One resident said after the announcement of the rapper's death that, the only way out of Far Rockaway is either death or jail. Another resident said, there are no success stories out here. You're killed when you get successful. There were no immediate leads as the police looked for suspects. The only thing to go on was one eyewitness say he saw a black Mercedes speeding away from the crime scene. In fact, it wasn't until December of 2017, two and a half years after his death, that anyone was arrested in connection to the shooting. On December 14th, police finally arrested two men with evidence that the motive for the killing goes back a few years. Remember how Chinks was locked up for a few years on robbery charges back in 2005? After he was released and his music career started taking off, he was caught violating parole, which sent him back behind bars. This time, he was locked up on Rikers Island. Another aspiring rapper, Quincy Homer, aka Quality, was also there at that time. On September 27, 2009, they got into a fight. The commanding officer of the Queen's South Homicide Squad, who was in charge of Shink's murder investigation, says that, We're not exactly sure what the fight was about, but our perpetrator Quincy probably got the worst of it, and he wanted to get back at Shink's. It could have also been due to jealousy, when he saw Shink's career starting to blow, he took it real personal and figured that his own career was going south. Quality wasn't going to stand by and be shown up, so the beef escalated. In April 2015, the two met again at Shink's performance in Philadelphia. They quickly got into a verbal fight, which led to Quality being dismissed and pretty much blacklisted from the industry. It took less than a month for Quality to make his final move on the years-long beef between them. He and his friend Jamar Hill knew where Chinks would be performing that night in May and followed him away from the venue before pulling up beside him and emptying a 9mm into the car in Queens. The two men were arrested and charged with second-degree murder, second-degree attempted murder, first-degree assault, and two counts of second-degree criminal possession of a weapon. All that came with an expected 25 to life. Both of the suspects were arrested while locked up on unrelated charges. Jamar Hill died of a heart attack in July 2018, and while his case is going to court still, there's little justice for the victim. Meanwhile, prosecutors have to wait for Quincy Homer's current robbery case to be resolved before they can go forward with the trial. There are rumors of plea deals, but no details yet. Quincy is still maintaining a complete innocence in the case. Doe B Alabama-based rapper Doe B was born Glenn Thomas in 1991. 
His childhood and teenage years were mostly uneventful, except for the shooting in 2009 when he took a bullet to the eye, resulting in his signature eye patch. In 2012, he started getting his music career on the road, releasing his first full-length mixtape under Hoodbridge Entertainment. It features production from greats like Lex Luger and Zaytoven, and immediately started turning heads. After its release, T.I. approached Doe to sign a Grand Hustle Records and was featured on a mixtape compilation. Doe B would only be able to work in the industry for a short while though. Almost exactly a year after signing with the label, he was shot and killed unexpectedly. On December 28, 2013, Doe B was with a group of people at the Centennial Bar and Grill on Highland Avenue in Montgomery, Alabama into the late night. He was set to perform that night, and a man named Jason McWilliams wanted Doe to help him get into the club, which Doe wouldn't do. Once McWilliams and his friend Darius Thomas were able to get into the building, they started throwing up gang signs and swearing at Doe and his crew. The antagonizing escalated until Thomas and Doe were face to face. One shoved the other, a bottle went flying, and suddenly, McWilliams was shooting into the crowds. Thomas ran to the stairs and shot up the place from there. After the chaos had died down, ambulances and police arrived. One woman, 21-year-old college student Kimberly Johnson, was pronounced dead at the scene. Another man, Timnarius Hamilton, also died of his wounds, and five other people were injured. Doe B was rushed to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead shortly after arriving. On hearing the news, T.I. took to Twitter to say, Rest in peace to my little brother Doe B. We gonna miss you, my nigga. You'll never be forgotten, and you will not die in vain. We love you, champ. Always. Doe B's management firm released a statement calling the rapper an amazing young man in every sense of the word, a truly talented artist, a loving father and a dedicated member of the hip-hop community at large. We ask that you remember him not by his untimely death, but by his love of life and the music he left behind. Just two days later, McWilliams turned himself into police, charged with two counts of capital murder. He was held without bond. Darius Thomas was arrested soon after for his part in the shooting. He ended up pleading guilty to all three deaths from the shooting, and on January 10, 2018, he was sentenced to 85 years in prison. In September of that year, another man, Taboris Mock, was arrested and charged with three charges of first-degree assault. Since Thomas took the rap for the killings, both Mock and McWilliams only got assault charges. They pleaded guilty and each received 15 years for their part in the shooting. Young Greatness Young Greatness was probably best known for his 2015 breakout hit, Moolah. As the song climbed the Billboard charts that year, the rapper seemed to be cementing himself into the industry pretty well. He was even named one of the 10 artists you need to know by Rolling Stone in March 2016. The rapper was born Theodore Jones in 1984 in New Orleans, but relocated with his family to Houston in 2005 after Hurricane Katrina destroyed his hometown. He took his musical influence from Jay-Z and Biggie Smalls and was soon attracting attention from local Houston rappers like Mike Jones and Bum B. That kind of industry attention was just what he needed, and he came out with a record deal with Quality Control Music and Motown labels in 2015. Unlike a lot of his fellow rappers, Young Greatness tended to stay out of trouble and never really got involved with gangbanging or drug dealing. He did get caught on drug possession charges and spent some time in prison between 2007 and 2010, but after that, he doubled down on his focus and worked hard to make the music happen. That unfortunately came to an end on October 29, 2018. Back in New Orleans for business, he was outside of a Waffle House, FaceTiming his manager. All of a sudden, shots started popping and eyewitnesses say they saw Greatness running away from the restaurant. A little while after the shots had ended, the rapper was found face down not far away, shot in the back. He was pronounced dead right there and it was noted that his car was missing from the parking lot. There are no suspects and no leads, except for some fuzzy surveillance footage. After some investigation and help from the public, police had their suspects. 17-year-old Low Vance Wicks, 19-year-old Donnie Maxwell, and 39-year-old Donald Rowe. In 2019, Wicks pleaded guilty of armed robbery and obstruction of justice. He denied killing greatness, but admitted to illegally firing a weapon. He received a 20-year sentence, helped by the fact that he was only 16 at the time of the murder. Maxwell pleaded guilty to all of those same charges, as well as manslaughter, and is awaiting sentencing. Donald Rowe has pleaded not guilty to charges of second-degree murder, being a convicted felon in possession of a firearm, and a few other charges. If he is convicted of the murder, he'll be handed a life sentence. 